Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, and members, I got to try one more time to represent my constituents. People on fixed incomes, the low income, the businesses, the co-ops, and the munis. And, uh, you know, I mentioned in uh, committee, I've had people come into my, I own an independent insurance agency, I've had people come into my office, they can't afford to pay the, buy their groceries and pay their electric bill. I've actually written out checks to help seniors pay those bills. I don't know if the rest of you have. We are at the breaking point out there in the rural area with some of these low income and fixed income people. And now we're going to foist this on them. Now let's see where we're at with the current uh, uh, alternative energy. And this comes from a lobbyist from XL. And I have a copy of it here along with his picture even. But according to, to the illustration on solar gardens, we should be charging about four cents a kilowatt hour for that electricity. But the PUC and the Commerce Department artificially inflate that price between 10 and 12 cents a kilowatt hour. So we are, if you remember Enron, ladies and gentlemen, Enron didn't produce a lot of electricity in the private sector, but they did artificially uh, inflate the price and make millions. What happened to their CEOs, to their executives? They were arrested and thrown in jail. Well, what we have here in the state of Minnesota, we got the people running the PUC and the Commerce Department artificially doing the same thing Enron did. And you know what would happen to them if they did it in the private sector? They'd be arrested and thrown in jail, which is where they rightly belong. And you're fleecing the flock of the Minnesota ratepayers for the benefit of the few. People are going to get rich off this thing, a few, and the rest of us are going to pay for the show. You say, well, is that the worst? Well, there's something additional on top of that. Oh, and by the way, I did remember the thought I was going to share. You know what's going to happen to these solar gardens and, and windmills that are owned by corporations? They're going to declare bankruptcy one day when they're shot, and then the people who milked the system and made millions are going to leave the ship just like a bunch of rats off the ship. And they're going to leave the ratepayers and the people of Minnesota to pick up the tab. That's what we're doing here. And I'm supposed to believe that this bill is going to be different? I'm sorry, I wasn't born yesterday. In addition to that, the lobbyists shared that of the solar gardens, and this is about a year old, of the solar gardens here in the state of Minnesota, only 13% of the solar gardens are owned by corporations and individuals here in the Minnesota. 67% of the solar gardens in the state of Minnesota are owned by corporations and individuals outside the state of Minnesota. According to this lobbyist, Warren Buffett owns a bunch of our solar gardens in the state of Minnesota. So we're artificially inflating the cost fleecing the people of Minnesota and rewarding people outside the state of Minnesota. But that's not the worst of it, ladies and gentlemen. According to this lobbyist, 20% of the solar gardens in the state of Minnesota are owned by foreign corporations and individuals. Think about that. We're fleecing the people in the state of Minnesota and sending the money to foreigners. This is insanity. Okay, the other thing, there is a pamphlet on the uh, internet I'd encourage each person to read. It's called Energy Poverty. Please read that and see what you're doing to the people who are under this type of uh, mandate that we're about to pass and make things worse. You know, members, in my district, I subscribe to all the newspapers, and I never seen this till this last summer, but the largest city in my district, on the front page of the newspaper said, we may experience uh, temporary power outages in the city. I've never seen that, that was a headline, and you went to the municipality, it also was there. So we're already at the point where people are, are concerned about rolling blackouts. This bill is only gonna make it worse. And if you vote for this, 
you're putting this type of aggravation on the people of the state of Minnesota. Finally, members, I, for 30 years, I've tried to read both sides of the scientific article, okay? And one of the books that I just referenced is Why Scientists Disagree About Global Warming. It's writ it, written by three eminently qualified scientists. One is Dr. Idzo, he's a climatologist, uh, a worldwide recognized. The other one is Dr. Carter, he's a geologist and environmental uh, scientist. Another is Fred Singer, a physicist. This is a very readable book for lay people. In this book, they destroy the consensus and the 97% of scientists agree. It's a fraud and a lie. Secondly, they postulate several conclusions. I won't read them all, but I will read a couple. First is that the IPCC and the GCM, here's their statement, they overestimate the sensitivity of climate to carbon dioxide. You know what that means, Mr. President? It means they're embellishing and inflating and actually lying about some of the data. Secondly, they said, historically, increases in CO2 followed increases in temperature. This did not, it did not precede them. Therefore, levels could not be uh, fixed to temperature. That's another one of their conclusions. Two more conclusions. Melting of the Arctic ice and polar eye caps is not occurring at, or is occurring at natural levels and is consistent with normal fluctuations over hundreds of years here on Earth based on the scientific data. And the last thing, members, the available data shows sea level rise is not accelerating. You know, the world's not ending. So, members, you know what this bill is? It's, called, it's the Obamacare of energy. So if you like your health insurance premiums, you're gonna love your electricity rates, okay? Because it's the same philosophy. Government micromanaging uh, the private sector, driving up the cost and making it in inefficient. Um, the last thing I'll share, I think I said that once already. <laughs> the last thing I'll share, government, uh, Stanford a couple years ago had an article in the Star Tribune. I cut it out. It was by a Professor Emeritus who ran a department on the corruption of the scientific method. And what he brought out is that government subsidies into science actually is corrupting the scientific method. In other words, the subsidies want a certain conclusion. If scientists give the conclusion, they get more money. And he said, we need to have an investigation of these government subsidies that are corrupting the scientific method. Please, members, vote against this bill and vote for your, your constituents, lower electricity cost, and a, a better way of life for ourselves and our children. Thank you, Mr. President.